Hi, uh, my name is Peter Cheeseman. I uh, originally trained as a physicist, but like many in my generation, I was fascinated by computers and gradually moved away from computing into artificial intelligence as my research area. Now, at that time, AI was really just beginning, and it was possible to actually read everything that had been written in AI. It occupied less than one shelf. Today, that's just totally impossible. So I've watched the development of AI over the last five, six decades, and it's been a fascinating process. So everyone in the early AI days thought we actually have a working AI in a decade or two. And so it's very clear that we severely underestimated the difficulty of the problem. And now people are shy because they've made so many predictions about how soon it was going to happen, and it didn't, that now they're saying 50 years, 100 years, or never in some cases. So uh, I'm not as pessimistic as that, and for several reasons. Um, one is that uh, in computing, the available computing power is now just unbelievable. So it's often described as a computing overhang. So we're not limited by the speed of computers anymore. The other th limitation on AI, the early stages, is we simply didn't have much information available online that the computer could access. And now with the internet, we have more information available than any human could ever hope to uh, accommodate. And yet, I believe a, a working AI could suck up all that knowledge, process it, understand it, and filter out all of the, the nonsense that's there and figure out the, the, the core intelligence that's there, which is essentially the accumulated knowledge of all humanity. So the big problem is not that we, can't, we don't have the information online and not that we don't have the computing power, problem is how do we actually make use of this? How do we just have an algorithm that can actually build knowledge over time and then reason about that knowledge in order to really understand the world and make good decisions? So that's the general problem of AI, but what happened in the AI field was really interesting. Nearly everybody who got into the field was quite sure that this uh, self-improving AI where you, uh, AI is developed of sufficient intelligence that it can reason about itself, it could then improve itself, and then we would have what's called the intelligence explosion. It would very quickly uh, exceed human intelligence by many orders of magnitude. And so we're not apparently near that threshold now. There are some people working in an area called artificial general intelligence that are aiming in this direction, but everyone in the field understands that it's still very early days. So an interesting question is why did the mainstream AI not try to develop these integrated systems? And I don't really have a good answer to that question. I think it's mostly because um, the problem itself is too big for any one person or even a small group to tackle. And even if they were willing to tackle it, it's pretty hard to get funding to actually take it for as long as it's necessary to make it actually happen. <coughs> but whether um, this particular AI, artificial general intelligence community gets there first, or whether it's going to be some research group in Google or Microsoft or the like, AGI is coming. And it's coming a lot sooner than I think most people think it will. So I've heard estimates that range from five to 50 years. My own feeling is maybe a decade maybe a little bit more, but these pretty much are numbers pulled out of the air. We really don't know because we're still at this fundamental bottleneck of figuring out how, to, how computers can reason about their own reasoning. And we just don't have good theories on how to do that yet. But assuming that does happen, this opens up a much more important question. So let's assume that in a decade or so, we will have artificial general intelligence and it undergoes this, this intelligence explosion. And so now we have these computers that are far more intelligent than humans. There's a serious concern, myself and others, that this would, could end up uh, in the extermination of humans. And most of us consider this a not very desirable outcome. Now, one of the reasons for thinking this might be the case is because we do not know of any aliens. Now, why is that relevant? Well, we now understand from recent astronomy that nearly every star has planets around it. 
and we understand from Earth that life got started pretty much as soon as conditions on the surface of Earth was, were uh, sufficiently non-hostile that life could begin. In other words, it began pretty much as soon as the, the bombardment of Earth uh, stopped. And the other part of the Earth life story of, is that it was singular cell forms for nearly three and a half billion years that the multicellular life forms, which accumulated in uh, species like our own, was only half a billion years. It's a relatively small part of that, that time. So maybe life has started on other planets. But given that the overall time for us to get to where we are was roughly 4 billion years, and the universe itself is nearly 13 billion years old, it seems highly likely that other stars, even just in our own galaxy, have not only develop life, but develop life to an intelligence, uh, intelligent level, equivalent and maybe higher than our own. And so why haven't we heard from them? Well, one explanation is that's exactly what happened. They got to this level. They built these uh, AGIs that had higher intelligence than their own species, and that led to their extinction. And that's not a uh, very comforting conclusion. Now, fortunately, it's not the only possibility. Uh, other possibilities is that the species merged with their machines. And because we know that th the speed of thought is limited by the speed of light, then it, there's a strong empirical imperative for these, uh, I won't say human, but uh, biological life forms merged with uh, silicon life forms, or not necessarily silicon, but, but computing life forms, to perform this, uh, to become these super intelligent beings, they would have shrunk. That's how they speed up their processes. That's how they speed up their thought. And so they may have become microscopic. And to them, species like ours would be like a glacier. It would barely even, at their speed of thought, we would hardly appear to move at all. So why would they have, want to have conversations with us? That's another possible explanation. But essentially we don't know, and the absence of any uh, knowledge of other intelligent aliens is a very disturbing statistic. So that's one little piece of empirical evidence. But the other evidence comes from, well, if something's super intelligent, if ever it forms a goal that is detrimental to us, there's no way we're going to outsmart it. And so it really poses a strong threat. Now, why would it want to do anything that was detrimental to us? Well, um, one uh, possibility that a lot of people have be been discussing is the problem of unintended consequences. People give it goals that they think are what they want, but they're not really, there's consequences of what they, they asked for that are not exactly what they wanted. So if they want the machine to become even more intelligent, then one way of doing that is to build more and more processes. But building processes takes resources. And if all you're telling it is to make become more intelligent, then it'll start taking resources away from us. So an unintended consequence is um, we're starved or pushed out because we're a threat to increasing the intelligence. So that's an example of the unintended consequences. So um, that's one possible form in which um, superintelligence could be a risk to humans. But I view the most important one is the question of who gives it the goals. Now, that opens up the question of who owns the first AGI. Now, because of this intelligence explosion, whichever group makes it there first, then it's the intelligence they create will so far advance beyond everything else, including other AGI research groups, that one of the things it would be able to do would be suppress the research done by these other groups. So really, the first AGI will also be the last. And whoever owns that AGI their goals are going to become the AGI goals. And if it's a business that owns it, 
no matter how much Google might say their, uh, their goal is do no evil, they may do the ultimate evil, which is exterminating the human race, only because they insist on using it to, to increase their profits. Now, that doesn't sound like a uh, particularly uh, damaging goal, but if you look at possible unintended consequences from trying to do this, it could end up being uh, very damaging. Yes, the Google shareholders and, and owners will do very well out of this, but doesn't mean human race as a whole will do well at all. So that's one possibility. Um, even more frightening prospects are if different governments get hold of this technology. But let's say it is being developed somewhere and it actually reaches this level, then it's hard to imagine how this would pass the notice of various intelligence agencies. So once you've got one organization with the AGI, then it's highly likely that others are going to try and steal or strong arm the technology out of whoever developed it first. And once it's out of the box, you can't put it back. In other words, once you've got different organizations owning different copies of this AGI, now you've got a really nasty situation because they have conflicting goals. And you've got this super intelligent entity that's trying to achieve the goals of each one of these separately. And the areas of conflict are uh, a source of really major potential danger. So uh, I think the issue of who owns the AGI is going to be a crucial issue. Now, there's a lot of research going on by various organizations to try and come up with regulations that would either stop the development of this or tightly regulate it so that uh, we can be sure that it would be a single AGI and it would benefit humanity as a whole. But I ask you, how often has regulation been successful? So an example is human cloning. Now, cloning of other animals is largely unregulated and pretty much uh, nearly every major species has, has been cloned. And there's no technical reason why humans can't be cloned, but there's obviously major ethical and societal implications of cloning of humans. But if individual countries basically try to ban it, as many have, all that means is someone who wants to clone will just move to a location where it's not banned. And I don't see any reason why development of AGI wouldn't follow a, single, a similar pattern. Unless we have world government that has extremely strong enforcement, it's hard to see how regulation could actually stop the development of an AGI. So the net result of this, as far as safety is concerned for the human race, the only hope that I think we have is to influence whoever is going to be developing these AGIs to develop them in such a way that we don't fix the goals once ahead of time. Because I don't believe we can get the ethics right once and for all. I think the only way we're going to do this and still learn to live with this superintelligence is if the goal system that it builds is done through interaction through us. Not just individuals, but a large collective human intelligence that looks at its decisions and provides feedback on what they like and don't like about its decisions. So in other words, we'll give it the best ethics we can to start with, but because we can't expect to get that right perfectly on the first pass, we need to interact with it and continually evolve and develop the ethics system that it's using to, to make its decisions.